Okay, everybody, here we go again. We have another, well, the same really, 1962 Cadillac here. And we're going to do air conditioning today. Or better yet, what type of uh, part of the air conditioner are we going to concern ourselves with today? Well, we're concerned about the suction throttling valve, which was new for 1962. So, it's, a, uh, it's an interesting piece the way it's designed. Um, your refrigerant flows through the evaporator into the inlet of the valve here. Okay, and inside, that's your 30, 30 pounds constant. Constant, and the way it works is if you can see inside here, there's a piston inside there. That piston closes off circulation out of the valve. So basically, the refrigerant goes into the valve from the evaporator, out of the valve to the low side suction hose that goes to the compressor. So in, out. So when the piston is fully out this way you shut down flow through the evaporator which will in turn raise the pressure in the evaporator. Alright, now we're a gas at this point, of course. Yes. Alright. So, now the way it works is, there's a diaphragm here, you can see the rubber here. The diaphragm is in here and the piston is connected to the diaphragm. Behind the diaphragm on this side there's a big spring inside here. This big spring keeps pressure on the diaphragm, which keeps pressure on the piston, and it's calibrated so that the piston will not open unless the refrigerant pressure reaches 30 PSI. Then when it reaches 30 PSI, the pressure of the refrigerant will push the piston in, which will allow flow. That's to maintain that pressure at all times. Now, when you want to override the dial and have warmer air coming out of the vents, vacuum gets applied to this nipple, which in turn this vacuum diaphragm has a rod attached to it. The rod puts additional pressure on the piston going this way, which raises the pressure in the evaporator above 30 psi, which gives you warmer air out of your dash vents. Why would more pressure give you warmer? Because if you uh, look at a refrigerant pressure gauge, higher pressure equates to higher temperature refrigerant. Uh, so it's all in pressure, it's not in quantity. Right, it's in pressure. Okay, I was going to explain how the heat and air conditioning controls work on a 62 Cadillac. Uh, one thing a lot of people don't realize is that in this year, you can operate both heat and air conditioning simultaneously. Now that was in 61 too? 61 and 62, yeah. Now what were they getting ready for uh, maybe uh, the uh, climate control or uh, whatever they yeah, want to call it? Yeah, perhaps they redesigned the air box to allow uh, actuators not to clash into each other. So now let me ask you this, there's only one blower. There's only one blower. So what do you have? Two controllers now, one on the air conditioner side and one on the heater side that run the same blower? Yep. So what does it do if you have one on low and one on high? What is it going to do? It'll, it'll, the higher one will override. Okay. Let's go to the air conditioner first. You got uh, way over to the left with the top one, you got recirculate. Yes. Which is going to suck air from the cabin through the air conditioner, throw right. it back. So if we, on that lever on top, with the lever in the vent position, the compressor is not engaged. So you just get warm air, warm outside air. On normal, you get 80% inside air and 20% uh, outside air. And on recirc, you get 100% inside air. Right. And you have the four speeds for the um, air conditioner. Four speeds for the blower. Four speeds for the blower, right. The lower lever is a is connected to a vacuum actuator in the inside, or a vacuum uh, transducer, I guess would be more correct. And the transducer varies the amount of vacuum going to the suction throttling valve. In the far left position, you have a high amount of vacuum being applied, probably about 8 to 10 inches of mercury. And on the right, in the cooler position, you have no vacuum being applied. Now we're talking about in that valve. The valve on the evaporator, yes. Okay. The diaphragm in the front of the valve will apply extra spring pressure to the piston, which will in turn raise the evaporator pressure an additional, uh, up to additional 6 to 8 psi. So, so it allow more pressure, more freon would go past the valve, more cooling? No, it will, it, with the increased pressure in the evaporator, you'll have less flow in the evaporator, which will cause warmer air to come out. Oh, okay. So just the opposite. So higher pressure in the evaporator equals higher temperature air out of the dash vents. All right. So that dial, basically, this lever here just uh, increases the pressure in the evaporator. Right. Now, on the right-hand side, if you look, we have heat and defrost controls. And uh, on the upper portion, uh, if you move the uh, lever on top, 
It's interesting how this one works. If you just use the lower lever and turn it on, you have heat. As soon as you move it right off its base, the switch connect clicks and then your blower is on. And that lever also has a vacuum transducer which goes to a valve on the heater core which changes the amount of flow going through the heater core. So the lever to the far right will have maximum flow through the heater core. The lever closest to the off position will have minimum flow through the heater core. So if you're not careful, you could have a big battle going on here between hot and cold. Yeah. They're separate vents. Yeah, separate vents, and uh, if you have the air conditioning on and the heat on, heat will come out of the floor, and you can have air conditioning coming out of the dash vents, or air conditioning out of the dash vents, and having the defrosters on at the same time if you choose as well. All right, and this doesn't have a thing where on the ice or defroster it turns on the air conditioner. No, the compressor is not engaged in defroster mode, only if the air conditioner is on. Right, okay. There is an outfit in Florida that sells parts for these. It's called Classic Auto Air. The rebuild kit is $65. A bit high priced for a rubber diaphragm if I might add, but it's the only place you can get it. And the only other option is, is to eliminate this and put in a cycling clutch, which will be a compromise in cooling. So. We showed you how the suction throttling valve works. It is now installed in the car and rebuilt. You can see it living in its corner in the fender there. Now you notice we have a low side gauge hose connected to the valve, which will demonstrate how the valve works. The hose coming out of the bottom of the valve is the suction side hose that goes to the compressor. And then we have a normal high side hose connected to our gauge manifold here. We uh, charged it with uh, about three and a half pounds of hot shot, and we're getting very respectable results out of the dash vents. So in, in this video, we're just gonna show you how the valve works and how it reacts to pressure. Okay, now what I'm gonna demonstrate here is how the temperature dial on the dash works in relation to low side suction pressure. Currently, we're at maximum cooling. And as I slide the dial, you will see the low side pressure rise to give you warmer air temperature. Now the dial is about halfway, and as you can see, the low side pressure is now going up to about 42 pounds, which would give you an air outlet temperature of about 48 degrees according to the thermometer on this gauge. I move the lever to full left. You can see now, pressure is now at 58 pounds, which would give you 60 degree air temperature. And merely by moving the dial back, the pressure goes back down on the low side to a pressure of between 30 and 40 PSI.